In this lesson on probability, we're going to explore the concepts of a sample space and we're also going to explore what conditional probability means. In probability, the sample space refers to the list of all possible outcomes of an event. It can be a straightforward list, but the problem with that is a list can get quite long and sometimes you can't be sure if you've got everything or if you've repeated something. So you might list the numbers when you roll a die. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that's fairly straightforward. But if you roll two dice and add up the numbers, the possible totals are two, three, etc. all the way up to 6 plus 6 is 12. A more efficient way of representing this would be to use a table where you've got the numbers on one die and the numbers on the other die and then you add them up like an addition table. Another problem with a list in this case is when you roll two dice and add them up you can get totals from between 2 and 12 but they're not equally likely and if we were to just list the numbers from 2 to 12 it would suggest that it was equally likely to achieve a score of 2 as to achieve a score of 7 but in the table we can see that there's actually only one way of achieving a score of 2 out of 36 possibles so the probability of achieving a 2 is 1 out of 36 but the probability of achieving a 7 is 6 out of 36 so that's why when working with two events in this case two dice a table is a more effective and a more efficient way of listing the sample space the third way of showing a sample space is with a tree diagram and a tree diagram is useful for three or more events such as flipping a coin three times it could be heads or tails for the first flip heads or tails for the second flip and then heads or tails for the third flip and this could be extended for as many flips of the coin as you like so if you were asked a list if we flipped a coin three times, what are the outcomes? It could be head, tail, head, tail, head, head, three tails, three heads. But again, if you just try to list them all, you could easily repeat one or forget one. A tree diagram is a systematic way of creating that list. So if we read along the branches, the first is head, 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 then head, head, tail, and so on. And so we can see that there are eight possible outcomes and we can say that the size of the sample space here is 8 and the notation for that is m sample space is 8 the number of elements in the sample space is 8 with conditional probability we're placing a condition on the sample space take for example my situation where I'm flipping a coin three times What's the probability that I can flip a coin three times and achieve at least two heads? Looking at the full sample space, I've got one situation where all of the coins are heads, and then I've got two heads and a tail, head, tail, head, and tail, head, head. So four out of the eight possibilities have at least two heads in them. If I change it so that I say, well, given that the first coin is a head, what's the probability of achieving at least two heads? So we write this as probability of achieving at least two heads, given that, this vertical line means given that, 
the first coin is ahead. So I've placed a condition on my sample space. I'm only interested in the part of the tree diagram where the first coin is ahead. So I'm not interested in any of this. I've reduced my sample space to four outcomes. And of those four outcomes, three of them have two heads. So the probability of achieving at least two heads when you flip three coins is four out of eight. But if I'm given the condition that the first coin is a head, then the probability of achieving at least two heads is increased to three quarters. In this example, we have two envelopes, each containing three letters, and we make a two-letter word by picking a letter randomly from each envelope. So I could take the B and the B, or the A and the B, etc. So my sample space could just be written as a list. A, B, A, C, A, D, B, 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 C, B, D, C, B, C, 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 D. And you'll notice I've written this list in a fairly systematic way. I could just as easily have written my sample space in a table. In envelope 1, we have the letters A, B, C, and in envelope 2, we have the letters B, C, D. So combining them together in the table, A, B, A, C, A, D, B, 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 C, B, D, C, B, C, 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 D. It's the same information, but it's visually a little bit more helpful. And the third method I could use for my sample space is a tree diagram. I have three options for my first letter, A, B, C, and I then have three options for each of my second letters. So three ways of showing the sample space. What's the probability of achieving exactly one B? Now if we go through the list, we've got A, B, we don't want BB because that's two Bs. BC, BD, CB, and that's it. So the probability of achieving exactly one B is four out of the nine outcomes. What's the probability that the letters are the same? I'll use my table this time. We have two letters that appear in both envelopes, B and C. So the probability that the letters are the same is 2 out of the 9. Now we have a conditional probability question. So what's the probability that the first letter is A, given that the letters are not the same? So using the table again, this time I don't want to include where the letters are the same. I want the condition that the letters are not the same. So my denominator this time is not 9, but 7. And of those 7, how many words have the first letter of A? 1, 2, 3 words. So 3 out of 7 have a first letter of A, given that the letters are not the same. And finally, what's the probability that the second letter is B, given that the letters are the same. So remember my two possibilities for the letters being the same were BB and CC. Of those two, only one of them has a second letter of B, and so the probability that the second letter is B, given that the letters are the same, is 1 out of 2, or a half.